Welcome to the Stronger Than Steel podcast with your host, Austin Davidson and John Keir, talking Steelers all the time. Now, here's Austin and John. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stronger Than Steel podcast. Today is Season 6, Episode 9, and we're going to be looking at wide receivers. Steelers don't really need a wide receiver. Uh, it's not very high priority for them, but they are likely to draft one anyway, just late round flyer guy. They usually do. It's not been many drafts where the Steelers don't take a wide receiver somewhere, so it's always fun to keep looking. And wide receiver, as everyone knows, is my favorite position. It's been the position that I've been best at evaluating, in my own opinion. Uh, it's usually if a guy I say is going to be great, he's going to be great. If there's going to be a guy that I said that's going to be meh, he's usually going to be meh. And if there's a guy that's going to suck, he's usually going to suck. With a few obses- uh, a few exceptions, of course. But uh, it's been the one I've been best at evaluating. And it's it's one of the ones I haven't really had a miss from the beginning. So that being said, just want to say also a fun fact that Season 5, Episode 9, was also the wide receiver draft preview. And I found that funny, so I'd let you, I want to let you guys know that. But... That being said, let us hop into some prospects. And we're going to start with Sage Surratt. He's from Wake Forest. He's 6'2 and 209 pounds. He opted out in 2019. And he is a Z slash X receiver. He played outside of... Uh, basically, he played both outside spots. But uh, he's mostly Z. Uh, he's the brother to UNC inside linebacker Chaz, Chaz, Chaz Surratt that I looked at earlier this year. Uh, he was North Carolina's Offensive Player of the Year as a senior, uh, but surprisingly, he was only named a three-star receiver coming out of high school. He had originally committed to Harvard, but pivoted and chose Wake Forest. Uh, he redshirted in 2017, but in 2018, he got nine starts while playing in 13 games, getting 41 catches for 581 yards and four touchdowns. In 2019, he would have started all the games, but a shoulder injury that required surgery knocked him out for the last month. Still... He was recognized with first-team All-ACC honors for his nine starts with 66 catches, 1,001 yards, and 11 touchdowns while also returning 11 punts for 91 yards and 8.3 average uh, for the punt return uh, yards. Uh, Sage was set for a great 2020, but with the pandemic, he opted out and decided to prepare for the NFL draft. So let's start with what's good about him. Is that he has solid size, standing at six foot two. That's pretty good for an uh, NFL wide receiver. It's above average, honestly. And at two hundred nine pounds, it's pretty solid, pretty big actually. Uh, then he's a willing and good blocker with above average strength for a wide receiver. Uh, the, the added size definitely makes him bigger, better at blocking. I felt like he really could block anyone. I feel like he, uh, wide receivers are an X to be in line, but like I feel like. Honestly, as a tight end, he could handle it. I feel like he would be a good guy uh, as an inline blocker if needed to be, but uh, basically if he needed to play tight end in a pinch. But all in all, he's going to handle almost all cornerbacks. I think he could handle NFL cornerbacks, that being said, in block in terms of blocking. Then I thought he was competitive and catch and traffic expert. Uh, he had a lot of those on tape. In fact, there was really most of them, and he had become an expert at winning those kind of balls because he just had so many. Uh, that being said, strong hands. Uh, I thought that he was able to snatch balls out of the air pretty well. And, I mean, he was able to pull them away from defenders and win. Uh, then he has adequate shiftiness with the ball in his hands. I thought that it's not amazing. I'm not going to say it was amazing and, and great, but I thought he was he was good enough. Where I was like, okay, he's not completely terrible with the ball in his hands. I, I think that there's some, something to work with there that he could get better and more elusive. Uh, I liked his effort in working back to his quarterback. I felt like uh, on a lot of plays, he was able to make uh, at least get into a better position to make a catch if his quarterback rolled out of the pocket, under was under pressure. He was doing a good job to make it back, ab- abandon his route, uh, his route if he had to. Then uh, he falls forward with extra yards all the time. Tackling doesn't matter. He is going to fall forward for those extra yards. I like that. I like guys that are going to fight for that ex- the extra few yards. And, I mean, with his size, it's pretty easy for him to do. It's hard to tackle him, honestly. It's hard to take him down and make him lose yards. But uh, then he has positional versatility. Uh, I saw him in play in the slot some against UNC in 2019. So he has played all over the field in all the wide receiver positions. So he has that positional versatility. Now, what's not... Good about him is that his routes are not crisp and his route tree is limited. He really didn't run that many routes, like in terms of different routes. 
And then they just... He, he's just not crisp enough. Like, on out and in routes. Like, that's a route that I, I would not put on his route tree because he just can't get a good break. I felt like he didn't have the foot quickness and foot agility to do so. And it's just not very good. And, be, and then on top of that, usually... Uh, if you don't have good route running, you can make up for it if you have better speed. He looks like he's running with weights. Uh, he's very, very slow. Very for a wide receiver. And that's not often that it it, it was it looked that slow. I, I, hit, I thought his play speed was terrible. And then he had a poor 40 time to match it uh, at his pro day. He ran a 4.7. That is tough. To run a 4.7 at your pro day as a wide receiver, that is not good. Uh... He needed to be bigger for that. Like, if if you're gonna be running that slow, you need to be like six foot five, like crazy height and size. That is bad, and it's not. It's not bad for a tight end, but like, in my next episode, right? Newsflash, fun fact: next episode is not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be in interior offensive line. I did my Mod Podge episode that I done the past two years. I've done that next, which is kind of weird. I looked at two tight ends uh, as a spoiler. You don't. I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but both my tight ends ran a faster 40 time than than uh, Sage Surratt over here. So that was really really tough for me to swallow from the wide receiver position because cornerbacks are, are gonna be able to mirror him perfectly. He has to improve something because without the play speed, without the route running, he's gonna be covered all the time. And he's not quick off the snap whatsoever either. It's just he's just not got it. Everything speed wise is just not good. So all in all, not very great. And it's what this is what led him to be a combative catch expert and catch is because he's always draped in coverage because guys can keep up with him really easily. Uh, that being said, he struggles to create separation. Uh, there's not much he can do to create separation with all of those problems. And then the last negative is that his special teams ability he showed in college is null to me personally. With the speed he has. Uh, it's just... I don't think that he can be a punt returner with that kind of speed. Like, it's... It's essentially like putting Eric Ebron as your punt returner. Which... Eric Ebron's pretty fast, if I'm being honest, or a tight end. But, like, you don't put a tight end there. You're going to put an even quicker guy there. So, I think that his special team's ability are... Are basically... Shouldn't be considered. They're useless. Then the last... I think I said last thing for that. But last thing is he has only 18 starts. Not very experienced. He he needs more time to develop, I think. And I mean, you could make the argument that that's why his route running isn't as crisp. He, crisp. he hasn't had much time to develop it. I mean, he only got to play for two seasons, basically, and 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 sit in college for three. But that being said, overall, I think what's best for Surratt, if I'm being straight up honest with you, is he makes the conversion to tight end. I don't think he's an NFL wide receiver. I think that with his blocking abilities uh, and with his speed, I think he's way more suited to be an NFL tight end. And it's not that out of the question. His height is bad for a tight end. It, it, six foot two is bad because it, it, even even six foot three and six foot four is considered bad. Fun fact, because I found that out because of uh, my next two tight end prospects that I looked up and I. Shout out to at MathMom on Twitter. He looks at the relative athletic score of every single player that had a pro day. And because of that, I know what's like un under average and what's above average and what's good. And like for a guy like George Kittle, right? He was six foot three. That got an RAS of four point oh nine, and which five is average, uh means six uh six foot three is below average for ten M. That being said, uh George Kittle ran <laughs> A 4.5 40-yard dash at his at the combine. So that's the, now that's the problem here. Sage Surratt, uh, he, that uh, let me say that that 40-yard dash from Kittle was very rare. Surratt at 4.7 for a tight end. That's not bad. That's closer to average for a tight end. Uh, so that would be that would be good if he made that switch, and that's why I'm suggesting it. Honestly, that would probably be top end speed for a tight end. I think it would be considered well above average for a tight end. Because uh, looking at, at this other guy, he ran a 4.65 and he got an 8.9 RAS. So 0 0.05 later wouldn't be too much more. So all in all, that being said, I'd suggest a, t a switch to tight end for Surratt. Uh, 
Five months ago, Surratt was considered a late first rounder for people doing mock drafts, even going as high as 19 in one of them. But the mock drafts relaxed a bit, and most of them going in the fourth round. I can tell you one thing. Surratt isn't going anywhere close to the first round. So I have no idea what was going on five months ago, because personally, I give him a six-round grade. He reminds me almost exactly of J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, where they both couldn't create separation, but just make great contested catches, but... Sage's route running is worse coming out, in my opinion. It's just how it is. Whiteside was slow, but he also weighed 15 more pounds than Surratt coming out as well. And looking how it's going for J-Jaw, I can't give Surratt higher than a six-round grade. J-Jaw was one of my, like, probably my biggest misses looking at wide receivers. I thought that he could be, like, okay at the next level, and he's just been bad. Like, he's, he's just been straight up bad. It, it's just There's no other way around it. Uh, that's like my biggest miss at the wide receiver position, but, and that's, I think that literally affected me with Surratt because I just can't trust him. Uh, so, but going back to Surratt, I think he is still draftable because he has strong hands to make catches and has shown excellent blocking ability. And while his speed is basically unfixable, his route running can be developed and he could create separation that way instead. He only had started 18 college games, so there could be a lot of room for development, but however, I really, really want to hammer home that I think he's best suited for tight end at the NFL level. I think that there's so much less development he'll have to go through being a tight end. Sure, he's got to learn to be an inline blocker, but I mean, he has the weight, he has the strength, above average strength for a uh, wide receiver. Uh, he, he would come in as just average with his bench for a tight end. So I think he could really, really handle it, personally. I just, I just think that's best for him. I think... Show, he showed positional versatility at Wake Forest in the wide receiver room. I think that he can learn tight end, and that is my suggestion for him. Uh, I just think that that's what he's best suited for with his skill set. So to develop my opinion, I watched his highlights. I watched versus Louisville in 2019, versus UNC in 2019, versus FSU in 2019, versus NC State in 2019, and then I watched his senior bowl every one-on-one. -on -one. Shout out to whoever made that as well. Watching the Senior Bowl every one-on-one -on -one was really, really cool. I added, I think, for every wide receiver I looked at today. With that being said, I have Trevon Grimes next. He's from Florida. He's 6'4 and 220 pounds. He's a Z wide receiver. Uh, he was a big deal coming out of high school. He was labeled the best wide receiver in the nation back in 2017 recruiting, recruiting class. Expectedly, he had offers from Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, Florida, LSU, and Notre Dame. He decided to commit to Ohio State, though. As a true freshman, he played in two games, catching three passes for 20 yards. Uh, with no real sight of playing time for Grimes behind some good receivers, he decided to head back to his home state of Florida and play for the Gators, which, unfortunately for him, would have the same problem uh, playing with or behind Pitts, Freddie Swain, Van Jefferson, Gadarius Toney, and Josh Hammond. Still, though, in 2018, he played in 13 games and started one, getting 26 receptions for 364 yards and two touchdowns. In 2019, he got a much bigger role, starting 11 of 13 games and getting 33 catches for 491 yards and three touchdowns. In 2020, he started 11 of 12 games, only missing the team's bowl game and posted career high highs across the board with 30 catches for 589 yards, scoring nine touchdowns. He also rushed once for four yards, and then following his senior season, he declared for the draft. So what's good about him is he has great size. Uh, he is standing at six foot four, two inches tire, higher than Surratt, and he weighs 220 pounds. He's a big dude. He, he, he's got some size to him. And he is a willing blocker that held to block for a touchdown versus Georgia. I was happy with his blocking abilities. I don't think it was as good as Surratt's, but he was a willing blocker, and that's good to work around. And with his size, I think that it he should be a pretty good, uh, a good enough blocker at the NFL level that should kind of make up for him not being as, you know, good with his hands and stuff. Then uh, he has Wildcat quarterback experience, which I thought that was cool. Uh, I didn't see that from any of my other guys. Not to say, I, I probably should have looked it up if any of the guys got snaps at the Wildcat quarterback. I, I didn't personally, because it, it really does come down to the game as you watch. One of those guys could have, and I just didn't see the game that he did it. But uh, Trevon Grimes, I got to actually see do it. Uh, then he's pretty explosive out of his release. I'm so, uh, also, I apologize if you hear that in the background. Uh, my dog is pawing at my door because he really wants to get out. So I apologize about that. 
Uh, I hope it doesn't come up too much on the recording, but it do be like that sometimes. Anyway, as I was saying about Trevon Grimes, uh, he is explosive out of his release. I thought that he has really good burst out of it. Uh, on the ability to get separation right there, and he has solid route running. I thought that his route running overall was pretty good, especially for a guy his size. You don't really expect guys like that to kind of move as good because again, he basically has and he does have tight end size almost. I I think I just said for George Kittle, who's just below average for at six foot three, and Sharon Grimes is I mean at six foot four. So he basically does. He has that big ass, big ass size. Uh, so he shouldn't be running routes as good as he does. Then uh, he doesn't sell out with his eyes where he's going either. I, I like that about his route running. I, I felt like he wasn't uh, scripting out for the defender where he was going to make it harder. Uh, then he's faster a guy his size. He ran a 4.5 at his pro day. And just for com- comparison, other six foot wide receivers that have made it to the NFL more recently, like Mike Evans, Alan Lazard, and Auden Tate, ran a 4.53, 4.55, and 4.68 respectively. And while uh, Grimes was at his pro day, I don't think it's fair. To, uh, it's it's not too crazy to say that he wouldn't have run much slower at the combine. Like I, I feel like he could have matched the 4.55. Uh, oh, he could have even ran a true 4.5. I mean, it's supposed to be measured fairly accurately it just doesn't have the lasers so i'm pretty sure he would have uh ran close to that so on the native side he is not even the second guy defenses were worried about when it came to florida ever at any point like florida just was crazy with producing talent the past two years with with who they had on their field i mean this year it's kyle pitts and Kadarius tony 100 percent in front of them Last year's Van Jefferson, Freddie Swain, Kadarius Tony, and Kyle Pitts all in front of him, and you, uh, Josh Hammond was starting above him too. I mean, it's not—he's not a guy that defense are concerned with. I mean, when you think of what defense are concerned with, they want to shut down Kyle Pitts because Kyle Pitts is ridiculous in the passing game. They're not going to be focused on the second wide receiver on the field. It's just. I personally think that might have taken away. I mean, his level of competition wasn't as high because of it. He's going up against the third best cornerback, second best cornerback sometimes. The safety's not worried about him on his side because it's just they're not what they're looking for. It's it, it's just not that they trust their guy against Grimes. So that could be considered a negative. Then uh, physical players were able to dislodge the ball. He needs to be stronger and more physical at the catch point. I felt like... <sighs> It wasn't a, the biggest negative because it didn't happen at that much, but I really felt like at the NFL, I feel like at the NFL level, more physical cornerbacks are going to be really much tougher for him. I felt like for a guy his size, he should have been a little bit more physical at the catch point and stronger. If I'm not mistaken, he actually didn't do his bench at, the, at his pro day because uh, he, they didn't want people to know his strength because I think he's not actually as strong as his size says. I don't think... He might not have as much muscle on that 220-pound frame. If I can get it up for you guys right now, I will. I, w- I just want to make sure that I am right there. Just checking it really quick. No, he did do his bench. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Uh, he got six. Uh, he got 15 on the bench press, which is actually above average for a, a wide receiver. It's within average, but it's above. Uh, just... So, but yeah, he needs to be more physical at the catch point, regardless of his bench. Uh, then he doesn't play with very. The last thing I'll say is he doesn't play with very open hips, flexible hips. I mean, he did. He he didn't do very well on the broad jump, but overall, uh, he was okay. So, admittedly, I don't have the best read on Grimes. I really didn't have much to say because I felt like I needed more tape to watch, but there just isn't any, and that may be a reflection of just him not playing enough. He was off the field a lot, and in the game against Georgia, other than the touchdown he had, he was pretty much a non-factor. I think that's because Georgia has more than one competent corner. It's really it. I mean, Georgia has several defensive backs coming out this year with Stokes and, uh, oh, I can't forget, I, I forget the other guy's name because I just, I, I never even looked at him, but they have another competent corner that's expected to be like a second or third rounder. Uh, regardless, uh, he's just a non-factor in that game. And right now, my grade for him is a late 6th rounder, early 7th. And that seems to be the consensus. With a few people having him going in the 5th round, 
but I think a sixth or seventh wouldn't be bad for him. He may have been better with more playing time and just got unlucky getting to Florida when they had offensive talent everywhere. Just kind of how it works. I mean, he's transferred there and he stayed there, and it's nothing he could really do except try to beat out those guys, but those guys turned out to be really, really good. If you're just really good and playing behind guys that are just that much higher level, it's just it might not be your fault. I really like the one on rep, rep, one reps I saw in the Senior Bowl, but I just I don't really have a good read on him on Grimes personally. I th- I think that he's gonna be a good developmental guy because because uh, of his size, but uh, overall just I was kind of just okay with him, but I, I I don't really again I admittedly don't have the best read. Uh, so to develop my opinion, I watch his highlights. I watch versus Ole Miss 2020. I watch all his targets versus Vanderbilt in 2020. I watch all his targets versus LSU in 2020. I watch the Florida offense versus Georgia in 2020. And then I watch every senior bowl one-on-one rep. So that brings me to my next prospects. And that's Amari Rogers from Clemson. He was five foot nine and 212 pounds. He's a slot player. Uh, he is a guy that was in my original mock draft. The, the first one I did before I even know about anyone, and that's kind of why I chose him. I, I should be doing everyone in my mock draft pending the edge rusher from Appalachian, excuse me, the edge rusher from Appalachian State that I can't remember his name, and the guy from Marshall, or maybe his name is Jonathan Marshall. I, I forget it. He was a DT, and I don't think that, he, I think he does play at Marshall. I, I doubt I'll find tape on him, but I'm trying to do everyone I could get tape on, but uh, back to Rodgers, he is a pretty strong Pittsburgh connection. His dad, T. Martin, was a Tennessee quarterback back in 1999 that was drafted in the fifth round of the 2000 draft by none other than the Pittsburgh Steelers. He only lasted a year with the team, and he only played in the NFL until 2003 as a player, but he's currently serving as a newly hired Baltimore Ravens wide receivers coach in his first in- as an NFL coach. Pretty interesting. His wide receiver son's coming out. He's the new wide receiver coach there. That, there might be a connection to the Ravens. They need wide receivers desperately because no, none in free agent want to play for them other than Sammy Watkins. You know, that is that is something interesting for Baltimore. But Amari Rogers was a four-star recruit, a top 75 player, and the 12th ranked receiver coming out of high school back in 2017. He received offers from Alabama, FSU, LSU, Tennessee, and had originally committed to USC to play with Sam Darnold. But with Clemson throwing in a late offer, he changed course and headed there. As a true freshman, he played in 14 games, getting 19 catches for 123 yards, and also returned two punts for 15 yards. In 2019, he became a full-time starter, playing in all 15 games, for garnering honorable mention all ACC honors for his 55 catches for 575 yards, four touchdowns, having 39 punt returns for 299 yards, a 7.7 average, and a return touchdown, all while becoming a national champion. In the following March, he tore his ACL, but impressively only missed one game and start. Uh, and started 10 of 14 games, again receiving honorable mention all ACC recognition for his 30 catches for 426 yards, four touchdowns, two rushes for 50 yards, a rushing touchdown, and 18 punt returns for 151 yards, which was an 8.4 average. In 2020, Rodgers got to be the guy, with T. Higgins drafted and Justin Ross being out. He blew away his previous season stats with 77 catches for 1,020 yards, seven receiving touchdowns, two rushes for 50 yards, and nine punt returns for 64 yards, a 7.1 average. Following his senior season, he declared for the draft. So what's good about him is that he showed he could even produce without Trevor Lawrence in the regular season uh, Notre Dame game. Uh, Trevor Lawrence got COVID or was, I see, I don't know if he got COVID. I think he did. Uh, he, he was either exposed to COVID or got it and couldn't play for a game or two. And in the Notre Dame game I watched, Amari Rodgers was still able to produce without generational talent, uh, Trevor Lawrence, quote, unquote, I should say, generational talent, because I, I don't know. I didn't watch his tape if he's really going to be that good at the NFL level. But I thought that was a good thing. I, I, I liked being able to see him produce, because, like, I can't say that about, like, guys from, you know, I, I don't want to say Alabama because Mac Jones isn't, like, generational talent, but... I don't know. I, I, I guess it is still Alabama because, like, I could at least say Amari Rodgers produced with, like, no other wide receiver and w- without Trevor Lawrence at some point. I mean, Clemson might have another great wide receiver and someone's cursing me because I don't know, but I felt like the, I don't know anyone else from from Clemson other than Amari Rodgers. 
other than like Justin Ross and uh, with like you go to Alabama and it's like they got Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle, they got all these guys and uh, Amari Rogers was the guy and produced without Trevor Lawrence. Then he is ridiculously strong for a guy's size. He is compact. I mean, like at fi- at five foot nine, he's not the he's not a very tall guy, but he's compact and all muscle with nineteen bench press reps. I thought that was impressive. Was not expecting that. I know he's two hundred twelve pounds, which is pretty heavy for a five foot nine guy. And I should have expected it to be muscle, but I I don't know. I I thought that was nutty for him. Uh, then he blocks when axed. I thought. Uh, he wasn't always going to block all the time, but he did block when he was asked to block in certain situations. Uh, then he was really shifty with the ball in his hands. He's pretty elusive. I, I was happy with his elusiveness. Uh, some people say it's not very good. It's, they count it as a negative. I was, I was happy with it. I thought it was better than adequate. I thought that in the open field, he was pretty elusive. Then I thought he had good play, sp- play speed, uh, Without long legs, I, I, it's, I thought his speed was definitely adequate. And then uh, he created a lot of his own yards in that offense by catching a lot of short, ball, short balls. He was number three in all college football in yards after the catch. I went to look it up because I was like, this dude catches like all short yardage stuff. And he still, he's successful on it. And I, I literally went to look it up and I found that PFF had him as the number three in all of the FBS. So... Uh, he is pretty impressive, and I think that plays into his shiftiness. That's why I was surprised some people say that his uh, looseness was a negative because he creates all these yards basically for himself. Uh, then he has good jet sweep and shovel pass ability with Matt Canada coming into the Steelers, uh, and we don't really know the offense they're going to run, but, I mean, with what Matt, Matt Canada has shown to do, uh, this would be pretty good for them that he can handle these kind of this kind of stuff. Then uh, he has good adjustment in diving ability. He makes some tough catches. He, excuse me. Tough catches. He really showcased it against Pitt. Uh, I thought that his game against Pitt was really, really good. And, I mean, he showed some good abilities in that game. Uh, he has good speed coming out of his out of his break. I thought his, uh, his break speed was pretty good. And then he, my favorite thing about him, I was just kind of like, mm, yeah, he's okay. Uh, at coming out of like all the games, I watched his Senior Bowl one on ones. He absolutely cooked all the defensive backs at the Senior Bowl, including some guys I looked at in Aaron Rod Robinson, Tyree G- Gillespie, and Jacoby Stevens. Then I didn't look at him, but Sean Davis from Florida got absolutely destroyed. Um, Amari Rogers just way better than him. Uh, I thought his Senior Bowl one on one reps were eye popping. Like it, it really, it, it almost, it didn't change my opinion completely. But I I thought that he was so much... I I liked what he showed on -on one-on-one reps. So what's negative is that he's short. 5'9 is pretty short for a wide receiver. Uh, He's going to be... It's kind of even small for a slot receiver, but uh, it's something to consider. He's not like my other two prospects. Then he's not as good as a blocker as my other prospects and doesn't look for work if not directly X. I was... I wasn't disappointed because her guy five foot nine I wasn't expecting great blocking at at for his height I was disappointed with his strength though he's so strong and he doesn't really use it a uh, strong for a wide receiver I should say he I will give it to him that he did it when asked but I was kind of expecting more he's just not a very good blocker if I'm being honest that's probably why they don't ask him to do it that much and that's probably why he doesn't do it that much uh he struggled against corners that could punch up at the ball, like in the Virginia Notre Dame games, where he had drops, he had a drop in one and a fumble in the other, but it had a decent amount of time to bring both those balls in. Uh, he's really struggling with that. I think corners with longer arms and that can be more physical at the catch point could give him an issue at the NFL level because he did show that at the college level. But uh, so I guess the negative is he doesn't bring in the ball quick enough. I felt like he caught the ball away from his body, which is a good thing. You don't want you want wide receiver to make hand catches, not body catches. But he doesn't bring the ball in quick enough, and he lets guys get in there and uh, break the ball up. Then he didn't have sharp routes all the time. A few routes were too rounded out. Uh, it wasn't the biggest issue. It didn't happen all the time. But I figured I'd throw it in there because I saw it more than once and more than a couple times, really. Kind of like a handful. Uh, when there's danger, he takes his eyes off the ball. And that caused a couple drops on tape as well. He does not want to get hit. Well, he's scared of it, I guess. 
I should say, he's kind of worried about the hit and preparing for the hit, and it caused a few drops. You got to be able, at the NFL level, you got to be ready to get smacked and make that catch anyway. Uh, again, overall, he just really struggled against physical cor- corners that could hit harder. Guys with long appendages and guys that could hit hard, he had a really tough time against. Uh, he struggled to catch balls thrown behind him. It's not the worst negative in the world. I mean, you want your quarterback to throw the ball accurately. But you also want to see, if you're a great receiver, you want to see those great catches where it's like, okay, I'm helping my quarterback out even if he's not the best right now. Uh, Then he didn't run that many routes farther than seven yards down the field. His route tree was meh. Like, he really wasn't asked to do that much. Like, like, I I know I said that he was a uh, yards out of the catch specialist, which is good in one regard, but the other side of that field is that he really didn't run that far down the field. I mean, what is he adding to an offense? It's kind of what the Steelers did all last year with Juju Smith-Schuster, where they asked him to just not run anything down the field. And, I mean, that comp- uh, Juju is a whole different kind of slot receiver, but uh, Mari Rogers doing that, I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a good, I, he obviously excelled at that, but I wanted to see him run some more down the field, you know? Uh, he's not good at high po- pointing balls and is with a well below average vert at his pro day. He's just not very good on the jump and combative balls. Again, physical corners, not good against them. Uh, he jumps to try and make plays when he doesn't have to, and then is a much pass, a much worse pass catcher when jumping for some reason. There's something I noticed on tape and it, it happened in the senior bowl one-on-ones too. I think that's what I, what I ended up watching that made me write that. I was like, Cause I finally I saw it like more. I don't write it down if if it happens only once. I'm like, okay, well this is a once in a, this is a unique thing. I saw it a couple times, and that that was something weird that I had to write down for him. Then overall, Rogers been a guy that has risen up draft board since I took him in my original mock draft months ago, at the end of the comp pick portion of the fourth round. But people are still overall confused on where he's actually going to go, as there doesn't feel like a consensus. More people view him as a third round. Re- rounder now, but there are still a ton of mocks I have in the fifth round or even later. Personally, I am sticking with my original evaluation that he's a late fourth rounder. If not for watching his senior bowl one-on-ones, like it would have been leading into the fifth a little bit, but I don't see him falling out of the fourth anymore. But I also view the third as a bit early for him. I think he has potential, but his route tree was pretty limited at Clemson to only short yardage stuff. And there were a few drops against more physical corners that just rubbed me wrong where I don't think he's a good third rounder in a deep slot wide receiver class. There's a lot of slot wide receivers here going, and there's it's really a bunch of good ones. So I personally think that he shouldn't go in the third round, but that's just me. So to develop my opinion, I watch his highlights. I watched first Notre Dame 2020 in the regular season. I watched first Pitt in 2020. I watched first Virginia 2020, and then I watched every Senior Bowl one-on-one rep. That brings me to my last prospect, and that is She Smith. He is from South Carolina. He is five foot nine and 186 pounds. He is a slot guy, so unfortunately I did not look at any outside receivers this year. It wasn't on purpose. I usually just pick by names, and it just happened that I did not get a single outside corner, uh, a outside corner, outside wide receiver, an X wide receiver. But it is what it is. I I I'm hoping John got at least one in, in for his. But Smith was a four star rec- recruit coming out of high school and considered the second best player in South Carolina. He got offers from everywhere, including Clemson, but chose to stay real close to home where he knew he get early playing time at South Carolina. And the early playing time he received, he started 7 of 12 games as a true freshman, getting 29 catches for 409 yards, 3 touchdowns, and also added 5 kick return yards for 76 yards, a 15.2 average. I just want to say how impressive that was. That was in 2017 that with uh, Byron Edwards he was able to still get a starting role. I know he was in the slot and Byron Edwards was not in the slot, but I thought that was impressive. That was another, there was a notable wide receiver already there. Anyway, going into the next year, he started nine to 12 games in 2018 and made 45 receptions for 673 yards and four touchdowns. In 2019, he started 10 games and made 43 catches for 489 yards, two touchdowns and added 12 kick returns for 263 yards, a 21.9 average, and yeah, that was it. In 2020, he set career highs in the receiving department with 57 receptions for 633 yards and four touchdowns through only nine starts. He also added three kick returns, 47 yards, a 50.7 average return. Then following his senior season, he declared for the draft. So 
What's good about She Smith is that he is a willing blocker. I was pleasantly surprised that every single guy I looked at actually blocked at some point in some capacity. I know I said Amari Rodgers wasn't the best at it, but I was pleasantly surprised to see every single wide receiver blocking in some regard. Uh, then his versatility as a receiver playing in all the spots on tape and being on the field as the one wide receiver in those kind of sets was pretty good for me. I, I, he's the only wide receiver I looked at that was the one wide receiver in those kind of sets. Uh, none of my guys were considered that for them. I, but she Smith was considered the best wide receiver on his team. So he was the guy that got to play in those. So I found that interesting. And as a positive, uh, he possesses great breakaway speed, definitely the fastest of the bunch today. Uh, he had great, great play speed all in all. Uh, he is tough as hell. Uh, watching the Florida game, you would have thought South Carolina's quarterback wanted him killed. He took big hits and kept on rocking. And, I mean, Smith isn't the biggest guy. He, he really is not. He's five foot nine at 186 pounds. And, I mean, people are really worried about wide receivers and poundage these days. Us, uh, like kind of to go on a rant for a second. Devontae Smith is like 166 pounds, and people are like, oh no, he's not a top-tier wide receiver. He's not going to be that good at the NFL level. And I mean, it's... it's I, I, I mean, it's up in the air. Maybe it won't, but I, I feel like weight is being looked at too much. Then also, like, Tutu Atwell. Tutu Atwell is interesting. He's under 150 pounds. So that's, an, that, that's another interesting one, but I think that with how tough she Smith is, I think that he's going to survive at the NFL level. He took big hits in college and kept on rocking. Then while continuing on talking about his quarterback, how he wanted him killed, his quarterback sucked while we're on the subject. I was basically yelling at the screen on their last offensive play of a Florida game. That was tough. That was, I mean, he had she Smith wide open and she Smith is calling for it. And he, throw so late and behind that they don't score the touchdown. And it just made me so, so sad. He just overall was not very good. Maybe he will be my new Ian book. I talked about on the quarterback episode, how I miss saying Ian book sucked every, I'm going to miss saying Ian book sucked every year. Every time I looked at a, a um, Notre Dame prospect, I don't really look at South Carolina prospects all that often. I did look at Brian, uh, Brian Edwards though, but, Actually, I did. I looked at J.C. Horn too, but it has to be offensive guys. So maybe he will be the new Ian Book for me. Who knows? But uh, point being, getting back to the point at hand, uh, is that his quarterback did suck. Uh, then She Smith dis- displayed strong hands. Uh, I I thought that his catching was pretty good. I thought that he had good catch good catches while getting hit and stuff. So I thought that his hands were pretty solid. And then, really, he's the only wide receiver I, I watched get extra attention on more than a handful of plays. He was his guys, like, he was his team's top offensive threat. And he actually got attention, like, more than once. He was getting double teamed a couple times and stuff like that. So, uh, I was happy to see him produce even with plays like that. And watching him, peop- the other teams try to take him away because they were worried about him. Then uh, he's another guy with jet sweep and shovel pass potential. He's really good speed for it, and uh, I saw him do it a bunch on tape, so that's good. Uh, he is explosive out of his re- release with good acceleration. I th- I like that out of his release that he was darting. He was gone. It's a good way for him. And that being said, he creates massive separation with his speed and release combined. I mean, I felt like he was doing really well in those regards uh, and being able to get a lot, a lot of separation at the release point. Uh, then he's a guy that also destroyed in the one-on-one drills at the Senior Bowls, so that's good about him. Now, what's negative is that he's small in both the height and weight departments for NFL standards. Again, it's up to you on how you want to judge height and weight. I don't care. I really don't. I It's going to be something that people say is a negative, and I'm going to write it as a negative here, just because some people think that. But height and weight does not make a a wide receiver. It's all about how you play. If you play really good at five foot nine and 186 pounds, that's going to work out better than a guy who doesn't play well at six foot four. You know, it's just it's just how it is. Like uh, you, the six foot four could have the higher ceiling because he could develop it, but if you're there, you're there, and that's how I view it personally. Not saying that She Smith is there, so I am put. That's again why I'm putting it as negative. But yeah, he has thin arms and legs. 
and strength is definitely going to be concerned at the NFL level, and he knows it. He skipped the bench press. That's who skipped the bench press. I knew one of my wide receivers didn't do the bench press. I just thought, for some reason, I thought it was uh, Trevon Grimes. But yeah, uh, he skipped the bench press. He didn't look that strong on tape. Uh, and he doesn't really weigh that much. I mean, you could tell that he's not, he's, he wouldn't have really had that good of a bench press if he did it. Uh, then he needs to get better leverage at the catch point on combative catches. AKA, he needs to be more physical to get the defender out of the way. Again, this could be a strength issue. Could be a guy that struggles against more physical corners as well, stronger corners, because he's just not that strong himself. Uh, so that's something to be considered. I was disappointed with his uh, inability to clutch up at the end of the Florida game where he got three straight end zone targets. I just overall, just it made me sad. He dropped the first one. Even after getting a push off, the rest didn't notice. That one hurt the most. If I, He literally pushed off, got away with it as a free play, and dropped it as a wide open guy. That hurts. Dropping things wide open is always a big, big no no. Uh, but uh, what's it called? Uh, the other one was broken up by a defender, and the other was behind. I already talked about the behind one. But uh, I want to see him make a cl- clutch play on one of those. Like, it doesn't matter which one. Realistically, the first one is the worst. The other one, the defender made a good play, but I still want to see him make, like, that... Make I want him to make a clutch catch. South Carolina was out of the game regardless of if they scored that touchdown. So, I mean, maybe that's something to be considered. It's not like they lost the game on this. If they lost the game on this, it changes everything. It, it Well, it doesn't change everything. It changes... It makes me question his competitiveness. It makes me question that if he could be a clutch guy. This was just kind of a look in that he might not be as clutch. That, and But realistically, he could have gotten that last one too. It was thrown behind and late. But I want to see him to make one of those. Uh, then... He dropped some easy ones more than once. It reminded me of Juju a little, where he will make a great catch, but then drop an easy one randomly. It was just so random. Like, I just talked about that first drop. That was bad. It, w- it was really bad. It was a really easy catch. Then it wasn't the only one, though. Like, you make, like, routinely crazy catches, and then also it just had that one fr- weird drop. Then uh, he was another guy where his catching ability goes way down once he jumps. Once he was in the air, he was usually not coming down with the ball. I don't, I don't know what it, what it was with him. I guess scared of content of the ground or whatever, couldn't survive the ground. It was just tough for him. So with Sh- uh, She Smith, he easily had the best highlights of the bunch, but also had the worst play I got to see from all of them against Tennessee where his bobble on a wobbling ball a little behind when he was uncovered got un- got intercepted and he failed to make the tackle or just push him out of bounds when he was right there. And that play turned into a pick si- six. It's not the best c- comparison, but the ki- but he kind of reminds me of Deontay Johnson, a guy that's going to frustrate you with some drops but electric with the ball in his hands. Not quite the route runner as Johnson, but much much faster at a slightly higher weight coming out. Uh, a lot of people have Smith going in the fifth or sixth round, most of the mostly with a few saying that he'll go in the fourth and a couple saying that he could fall into the seventh, but no one said higher than the fourth, except me. I give She Smith a third round grade, and I'm surprised more people aren't talking about him. Yeah, again, the drops were f- frustrating, but he also has those flashes of those amazing spectacular catches like in the Auburn game, and there's still a lot to like with him when it came to his speed and round running abilities. He also plays bigger than he is. I didn't really talk about it, but he is aggressive. He's going to get in your face kind of guy, and I can tell he really gets under the skin of DBs. He's a he's a shit talker. He's a, he's a guy that's going to piss you off on the field. He's a wide receiver version of Jalen Ramsey, so to speak. Uh, then I'd love to see what he could do with a capable NFL quarterback. I just think, I mean, if he's put with a bad quarterback, again, I mean, it is what it is, but I think that if he's put with a good quarterback, he could really succeed even more than he did in South Carolina. I think getting She Smith with the comp pick, fourth round pick, would be a steal. Even later would be highway robbery, and that's where most people think he's going. So to develop my opinion, I watched his highlights. I watched versus Florida in 2020, versus Tennessee in 2020, versus Auburn in 2020, and then I watched every Senior Bowl one on one rep. So uh, I'm gonna rank my prospects now. I didn't really hide it. Number one for me is She Smith. I couldn't hide my love for She, she Smith. I think he'd be a great addition for the Matt Canada offense, and the value is really good. Wide receiver might not be a great pick in the fourth round, but if Steelers were to do it, I want it to be Smith. I feel like Smith truly is a third rounder. I think that he shows the same upside as Deontay Johnson. I mean, Deontay Johnson 
was much more productive, but the re- the knock on Johnson was that he had his yards at Toledo in a much easier conference. She Smith played against teams like Florida, Tennessee, and Auburn. I mean, those are Power Five schools, you know. So it's like I know that uh, like Tennessee wasn't that good, but regardless. I think that She Smith would be a great pick, and and if the Steelers somehow acquire a fifth round pick, that would be even better. And if he falls in the sixth round, you're gonna have me clapping, like literally clapping, because that, I think that'd be a great pick. She Smith, pay attention to him. Again, I want to remind people how good I am at spotting wide receiver talent. Not, <laughs> I really sound like I I really sound so conceited, but I I have to take this because I'm so bad at everywhere else. I I admit that. I'm not the greatest at other positions, so I, I I try to give myself the one thing I'm good at. After She Smith is Trevon Grimes. I view him as a low risk, high reward guy. His tape didn't really give me all too much on the real Trevon Grimes would be like, but I also think he would be a seventh rounder, and with his size, I think that would be a solid addition to try and develop him and see if he shows anything else. Uh, the Steelers had also reportedly actually talked to Trevon Grimes, so I think it makes sense with the connection. Third, I have Sage Surratt. I really thought Surratt would be last because yeesh, his tape was like watching a turtle. Uh, the reason he isn't is because I have a funny feeling, even though I gave him a six round grade, he'd fall into seventh or even go in trash up because his speed combined with his 2019 opt out like that has, has him not ready for the 2021 season. So it's another low risk situation, but that is going based on my evaluation. If he goes where others think he's going, which is around the late fourth round, that would be an awful pick for the Steelers. Really, really bad. I mean, even if you want to tra- try him as a tight end, I think that that is way, way, way too high for a guy that you don't even know can play tight end. I think as a six-round pick, I'd be happy because I could say, well, he could try to be a wide receiver or we might have taken him to be a tight end. I could be pretty happy with that overall, but... Uh, I just don't, I, I, I couldn't go above the sixth round. I, I think with the opt-out, not playing, having an injury in his college career, I mean, it wasn't the most recent year, but uh, just all of it combined is just not, it's not worth the risk anything above six. And I I think he'll be a seventh rounder. I, I really think that people are overvaluing uh, Sherratt by a lot. That being said, if he goes in the fourth, fifth, or fourth or fifth round, he would be my last prospect. But that leaves Amari Rogers for for last. Uh, I thought it was tough to call. I really didn't like Sage, but Rogers' price was just so high at a position the Steelers don't really need. I think he would be a solid addition to the Matt kind of offense as an unnamed NFL scout said he could be used like Debo Samuel, which would be good for them. But She Smith to me was just better, and for the Steelers to get Rodgers, they would likely have to use their earlier fourth, if not their third round pick. So I can't justify that when I think she Smith is better for a later pick. If Sage goes before Rodgers, though, please bump Rodgers over him because there's n- no world where that should happen. Yet it is a possibility. So again, Rodgers won't be last if Surratt goes before him. Or really, Surratt goes in the fourth or fifth round, honestly. So... Uh, that being said, that should wrap up the Season 6, Episode 9 of the Stronger Than Steel podcast. Uh, if you liked what you hear, you could check out our other episodes. We're going through every uh, positional group. We already did tight end, linebacker, specialist, cornerback, offense, tackle, safety, running back, quarterback, now wide receiver. And we got three more positions to go in interior offense line, edge, and interior defensive line. And just to remind people, the next episode is not interior offensive line I'm going back and doing two more cornerbacks and two more tight ends because why not I I felt I only did three tight ends I really wanted to add more and uh cornerbacks I I really wanted to look at a later round cornerback I also surprise surprise spoiler looked at Caleb Farley I went back I, I already have I have the 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 research done for them. So I already know what I think about them. I already know what I'm going to say about them. And uh, let it be known that my take on Caleb Farley is very interesting. Uh, that being said, you'll have to wait for that episode next. Uh, thank you for listening to the Strong and Steel podcast. If you want to check us out on social media, the, the links will be down below. And everybody, have a good night. You have been listening to Stronger Than Steel Podcast. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to check out our website listed in the description below.